Moon Knight doesn't usually get enough love in the comics, but he's recently had some amazing comic book runs and popped up in some pretty major story arcs, and he's shown throughout his history why he does deserve our respect. Welcome back, Nerd Squad. It's me, Amanda McKnight, aka Vampex13, but you can call me Vampy, and this is the top 10 superheroes Moon Knight has humbled. Who would you like to see Moon Knight go up against, and who do you think would actually win in that fight? Number 10. Deadpool. If you thought Deadpool was a brutal vigilante and sometimes straight up anti-hero, wait till you see him go up against Moon Knight. In Vengeance of the Moon Knight issue number 8, these two face off. And while you might think Deadpool's healing factor would give him a leg up here, it is actually Moon Knight who comes out the victor in their fight. What's interesting is seeing the difference and similarities of these characters juxtaposed throughout their fight. Both are brutal in terms of their methods, both have their own voices in their head to deal with, and both of them are often heroes who are misunderstood. Sometimes they seem like the bad guys while trying to do the heroic thing. Their initial fight here doesn't last long though, as Moon Knight uses his sword to make Deadpool admit defeat, with him surrendering, croaking out, Uncle. And friends, before we move on to our next spot on this list, if you love what we do here at Top 10 Nerd, why not consider subscribing? Click that subscribe button. It feeds the algorithm. It's good for your soul. You should do it. Number nine, Black Panther. During Age of Khonshu in the 2018 run of Avengers in issue number 33, Moon Knight faced off against pretty much all of the Avengers. One that he faced directly was Black Panther. Now, when he confronted T'Challa in Wakanda with his army of basically Khonshu worshipers, his presence was so intimidating, in addition to his previous encounters with Iron Fist, in addition to his previous encounters with Iron Fist and Doctor Strange, that the two didn't even have to fight. Instead, Black Panther simply chose to surrender. Of course, this was strategic, but the fact remains that Moon Knight got what he wanted, a willful surrender from Black Panther without even having to come to blows. Instead, he just intimidated T'Challa into surrendering to him, even if it was, like I said, also possibly a strategic play on Black Black Panther's side. T'Challa would still end up imprisoned, tormented, and bound, forced to bow down to the power of Khonshu in the next issue. Number 8. Ultimate Spider-Man when it comes to the Ultimate Universe, Moon Knight is an even more terrifying vigilante. At one point, he faces off against the Ultimate Universe version of Peter Parker's Spider-Man and manages to scare him off with how crazy and how powerful he is, and how scary he is, to be honest. Pretty impressive when you consider that normally Spider-Man would be considered more physically strong and overall more powerful than Mark and his Moon Knight persona. Why were these two even fighting? Well, Moon Knight has mistaken Spider-Man here for a criminal, but even Spider-Man man was just intimidated by the hero and instead of sticking around, opted to just escape the fight instead. It's not a straight up defeat, but making Spider-Man retreat is not easy to do in most cases. And I personally would still consider if somebody retreats that they kind of lost that fight because they left. Number seven, Ghost Rider. How do you humble the Ghost Rider? How about stealing his wheels. For Robbie Reyes, that's one of the worst things you can do, steal his car. And that's exactly what Moon Knight set out to do and accomplished. While Robbie was asleep, Moon Knight basically managed to jack his car, which also drained Robbie of much of his power as Ghost Rider, as that power was actually tied to his car. Moon Knight simply took the car and drove off into the night with it in issue number 33, part one of the Age of Conchu story from the 2018 run of Avengers. This was also the first part of that story, and to really humble Robbie Reyes, he was only one of a few heroes who had their source of power taken by Moon Knight all in this one single issue. Number 6, Spider-Man. Not only has Moon Knight very physically humbled Spider-Man from the Ultimate Universe, or rather I guess I should say the old Ultimate Universe anyway, but he's also humbled the Spider-Man of Earth 616 in a very personal way. At one point, Mark Spector adopted certain personas which acted as additional split personalities as part of his disassociative identity disorder. You might be familiar with Stephen Grant, Jake Lockley, and Mr. Knight, but these personas were unlike any of those that Moon Knight sometimes adopts and uses. But these personas that I'm talking about here were unlike any of those others that Moon Knight sometimes adopts and uses that you probably are familiar with. These were people that existed separate from Mark, who he was basically impersonating other heroes, one of them being Spider-Man. He donned Spider-Man's costume, literally impersonating him as he fought against the criminal underground of LA. At one point, this prompts Spider-Man, who was wrongfully, of course, getting critiqued for some of what Mark was up to, to ask Mark if he indeed dressed up as him and attacked an adult nightclub, to which Mark confirms, yes, he did. 
a little. Number five, Captain Marvel. This one was particularly brutal, especially for me as a Carol fan. Another hero who was targeted during the Age of Conchu story in the 2018 run of the Avengers was none other than Captain Marvel herself, Carol Danvers. Carol and Tony, aka Iron Man, were the last line of defense when it came to protecting the power of the Star Brand, which Conchu wanted most of all. And when Moon Knight came to collect the, and when Moon Knight came to collect, he made a surprisingly easy work of Carol here. He used the powers of Ghost Rider to basically incapacitate capacitate her, seemingly trapping her in the trunk of Robbie Reyes' Ghost Rider car, but as embarrassing as that predicament was for Captain Marvel, at least it was only very temporary. She quickly recovered, escaping from the trunk and flying in to save Starbrand and Iron Man, who according to Moon Knight looked like he was ready to consider handing over the young Starbrand host to Moon Knight and Khonshu due to the threat of Mephisto. In fact, even later Iron Man's like, whatever you do, like just you keep Starbrand, I should, probably shouldn't hold on to her. Number four. Conchu. I don't know if we exactly consider Conchu to be a hero per se. He's kind of more neutral. He's done some good and often acts from a place of, you know, believing, I would say, he's doing what is right. But he's not always correct about that. And sometimes even his best of intentions lead him to doing morally questionable things, let's say. Like in Age of Khonshu, when he struck out against the Avengers. He did this because he believed it needed to be done to defeat Mephisto, believing he needed to conquer Earth to, in essence, protect it from the Mephisto army that threatened to take control. So he was doing all this to, you know, protect Earth. However, he was kind of wrong in that, because also conquering people is that protecting them not really. And in the end, this prompted even his own avatar, Mark Spector, Moon Knight, to turn on him. With Moon Knight winning over the power of the Phoenix Force and using his own two fists of Khonshu to help defeat the Moon God. Or rather, his fists of Phoenix, really, at that time, I should say. Number three, Daredevil. These two have a brief fight in the 1980 series of Moon Knight in issue number 13. Here, Daredevil is hot on the trail of a villain known as the Jester. Unfortunately, Moon Knight decides to interfere as he cannot allow Dee Dee to apprehend this criminal yet. He cuts the zip line that Daredevil is using to cut across part of the city, and Daredevil stumbles, or rather falls, sort of tumbles into an arcade, which discombobulates his radar sense, because as we know with Daredevil, he really needs his hearing to actually be able to see, making it pretty much impossible for him to see, or it's pretty wonky in that arcade due to all the arcade noise. The two get in a scuffle, and while Dee Dee doesn't do a terrible job, I would say, of fighting against Moon Knight, considering at this moment he truly is really blind as a bat since his radar sense is affected. In the end, he's defeated by Moon Knight who throws his own billy club back at DD. Fortunately, right afterwards, the two heroes talk and end up deciding to team up as is usually the way of these things. But still, I mean, you know, it's a Moon Knight comic. So what do we expect when Moon Knight and Daredevil fight in a Moon Knight comic? I'm gonna expect Moon Knight to win and he does. Number two, Thor. Thor and Moon Knight had a very brief fight at the beginning of the Age of Khonshu event where Thor was quickly uh, put in his place. He does get revenge later on though, but that's that's a point for another list. The fight didn't last long, mainly because Moon Knight was actually able to wield Mjolnir. But not only that, not really so much wield, he was able to control the hammer. He was able to easily take it for himself. Thor, in fact, is one of the first heroes Moon Knight faces off with during this story, which is made all the more impressive when you consider that perhaps, apart from Hulk, Thor is often considered to be one of, if not the strongest Avenger that we have. Moon Knight simply lets Thor know that the metal his hammer is made of, Uru, believed to be one of the oldest metals in the universe, actually comes from an orb of night. That is a moon. It's moon metal, guys. It's moon rock. Man, because it is in essence made of that powerful moon rock, it's within Moon Knight's control to manipulate said weapon, since he's an avatar of the god of the moon. Number one, Moon Knight. Yep. At one point, Moon Knight defeated himself. He actually also faced himself in the very important Moon Knight story told throughout the Avengers, Age of Khonshu. Here, Moon Knight in the end realizes that he kind of might be the problem here and decides that, you know, he's done working for Khonshu. He's kind of done with gods, preferring to prey only to himself. In his final fight in the story against Black Panther, he ends up on the losing side of this fight and begs for Black Panther to finish it. To be clear, this is another fight that happens with Black Panther. Panther later on, not the first one that I talked about earlier on. However, Black Panther refuses to take Mark's life, permanently defeating Mark here. Instead, Mark decides to just 
finish it himself because he has to, he has to finish that prayer. So he punches himself so hard that he's basically reborn as the Phoenix. That's about it. Until next time, you stay nerdy, YouTube.